Can you take us through, you know, when things changed back last year, uh, take us through the first, you know, week and month of, of what that was like. Well, I think it really hit reality in about March of 2020 when we found out that we basically closed down the operations altogether. So, um, which meant we stopped jury trials, which was a big thing. And then we started to do more of these Zoom and WebEx hearings. So what would happen is then we had to kind of cobble together some TVs and cameras and what have you. So we were ordering PPE supplies and trying to get um, webcams and little things. So, and everything was out of glut. So, but finally we got, got everything we needed, you know, through, you know, May, June. And, and at that time we still were closed down and we we're trying to rent facilities, have jury trials and do things. But at the end of the day, every place we tried, they assumed they were going to get up and running again. And, and of course that didn't happen. So what happened was we ended up going to the county got some CARES Act money. So we went down to the county board in August of last year and asked for 650,000 to do about four or five different initiatives, including um, the county owned a, a vacant building across the street, the old a OHA building, which they now call the Douglas County Court Annex. So we remodeled that for a space to facilitate jury selection and social distance <clears throat> people. So in addition to that, we also still had the legislative chambers in, in, in the uh, Civic Center, but the problem there was the county board and city council met on Tuesday. So if we had any big trials on Mondays that took more than one day to select juries, it was a problem. So today we're still doing jury selection in, we call the LC on Mondays and Wednesdays. Likewise, we're doing jury selection in the annex on Mondays and Wednesday, Wednesdays. So basically we can start four trials a week um, now. And actually this is April 1st and we did have 10 jury trials, criminal jury trials that went off in, in, uh, in March. So, um, so we are back having trials social distancing people in the courtrooms and we only have like about eight or nine courtrooms that have that size availability so even judges that have a trial they have to move to a secondary courtroom to facilitate the social distancing aspect in addition to that we also added some closed circuit cameras in in like 11 of the courtrooms which allows us to broadcast these trials to a secondary location where the defendant's family or the victim's family can watch the trial um, while well, it's going on. So we have that ability and, and in the OHA building, again, we, in the annex, we call it, we have three viewing rooms there and we also have other courtrooms that are available in the courthouse in conference rooms that we can put people in to watch the trials. So what we end up getting from this CARES Act money for the county board was money to remodel that OHA building. We also got money to do courtroom video conferencing, which was to get um, better equipment TVs and cameras to facilitate the Zoom and WebEx hearings. And we also upgraded some of the sound systems that, that, um, that were lacking, um, got those up to, up to snuff. And then we also did this ring doorbell system, which we call the court access control project, which basically is now when you want to go see a bailiff or a judge, you have to hit a buzzer and then they get, there's a speaker phone that you can talk to the people or you didn't, unlock the door to let them in or there's an override feature that you can just come walk in anyway so the whole idea of this was to prevent contact you know to, to, to avoid people being within each other so also when this started we did a lot of you know plexiglass things buying all kinds of sanitation wipes and, and, and everything so uh, masks and uh sanitizer like looking at that and um all that so I think, you know, we were out, out of, do we didn't have a jury trial for a good year, I think. So it was, it was a year before any juries came back to an operation. So, so those are kind of the projects that we had. And I want to thank you guys for, for uh, giving us this award of the public service award. So um, thank you. It's all the bailiffs and judges and everybody kind of came together and, and made this happen. So it was a hurricane effort by everybody involved to, to change the way we do business. It's, it, was, it was a major undertaking. And really, I mean, it's about flexibility because things are going to change on a daily basis and you just have to, you have to be okay with that, right? I mean, the email about the mail services. And right. Yeah, know. just this week we had the outbreak of the mail room. They shut down for two, three days because they had a, so we couldn't send mail or bring mail down there. So we're still kind of in, in a limited capacity to get our mail in and out of the, uh, out of the, uh, 
whole courthouse. So, um, so even today we're having issues with respect to, to the outbreaks. Um, so yeah, it's, it's challenging. So, but we've had to shift gears a lot of, a lot of ways to accommodate this pandemic. Uh, and, and I mean, it's really been, everyone's had to do something different, right? Like nobody's had business as usual. Everyone's kind of had to shift in some way, right? I mean, oh, absolutely. Everybody. Yeah, absolutely. Like we've now had our door open. You see, we have a stop sign. You don't walk into my office anymore. We talk to them. They stay in the hallway. Um, our doors are open before they were closed. I mean, so people don't have to touch doorknobs and what have you and kind of restrict access to these places and, and just try to, you know, prevent, you know, contact with people. But, you know, obviously this building is challenging because it is uh, an old building. As you can see, the elevators are very small. We're limiting four people to an elevator, um, which still is, um, you know, it's it's still not probably within the guidelines, but we have to, we just had to keep moving along during this pandemic. So it was. Well, and, and you have else. requirements. I mean, you, you have the right to a speedy trial and, and you have, you know, right to jury. And like there are, there are these rights that are associated with what you have to accommodate to, right? And accomplish. Absolutely. So there's been some, you know, judges have to go on the record and explain that, you know, due to the fact that we cannot social distance safely or cannot do these things safely, that we have to suspend these speedy trial rules and, and, um, and, and that's why I think when we came back to operations, we prioritized the criminal trials only to make sure that it didn't make sense if a guy sitting in jail and we, you know, waived the speedy because, you know, we didn't want to start civil trials up. That would have a bad, the optics of that is not good. So that's why right now we're only concentrating on criminal trials, um, unfortunately, to the civil bar. But it is, uh, it's just a fact of life. We have to treat the defendants that are in custody, you know, prioritize those folks over over um, civil trials at this point, but we're hoping that June, July, we're going to get back, get back to normal and get these things back in, in, um, in operation. Because as, as you know, Dave, that, you know, civil trials, you've got all kinds of witnesses that have to come in from out of state. And it's, it's quite a, it's quite a, you know, there's more to it than just, you got to plan these things out months ahead of time. And it's not as simple just say, we're going to start a trial next week. People have to be prepared and get their witnesses and, in, in you know lined up and be here at, 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 in a timely manner so and, and hopefully there's some efficiency that comes out of this too though right i mean the, the upside to all the work that's been done and the flexibility understanding that we can do some things with web maybe that maybe that helps efficiency in some ways i don't know well absolutely i think what's going to come out of this is that you know we're going to keep the equipment here and for example let's say you're an attorney out west omaha and you have to come down for a 15 minute hearing well why drive down here, park, spend an hour and, you know, half hour driving down here. And then, so I think what's going to happen is we're going to use the WebEx more and then it'll be um, more efficient for those kind of hearings that they would prevent traveling down here. And, and um, so we can see this moving on in the future as really being kind of a, you know, a, um, a positive thing in a way that came out of this, that we're going to be able to use technology going forward in a, in a more efficient manner for people. But we also know that the, there's magic to being in the courthouse and seeing, you know, judges and attorneys and, and you know, that sort of stuff too. So we don't want to tell everybody to stay. We don't want this to become the federal courthouse, right? Where nobody's in No, there. we still want the decorum and have the, you know, the, but if there's hearings where the client's not here and those types of things, and, you know, there, it, it makes sense to, to not be here in certain, certain instances. But yeah, but I think, yeah, we still want to have the, still have the, uh, the in-person hearings. How many staff are associated with the district court? Well, we've got about 75 or 100, I guess. You've got, you know, each judge has a bailiff and a court reporter. So that's 16 judges, 48. Then I think there's another. The drug court has about 10 staff. I have about five staff. We have six or seven law clerks and then conciliation court. So I think I'd say about 100 staff are in the, in the, in the district court itself. Wow. So. And I, I mean, you got, you guys are, are moving forward. Like there, there isn't, there, there's no, there's no saying we can't do this. Right. I mean, it, it's gotta be, all right, let's do it. You, you just can't say, you can't say judge Wheelock. I appreciate that you want this to happen. You, you gotta accommodate, right? You, you have to make that happen. You're a solution guy. Yeah, we have to go. It was one of those, yep, we can't, um, people are still need the court services. You can't just shut down. It's, it's amazing how. The need's there. I mean, people are still committing crimes. People are still getting divorced. You know, people are slipping falls. It's still happening. We can't just um, we have to keep the spigot moving. And I guess that's my, my last question is um, 
how's volume coming in right now compared to where it's been in the past? Are, are there less filings? Are there about the same filings? Are there, are there more now that people think that it's opening up? Is it, how does it kind of compare to pre-pandemic, do you think? Well, to be honest, I don't know, but I, I don't see any, I think it's about the same. Yeah. I guess I haven't did the research on it, but I don't see any real um, differences yeah. without looking at the numbers, but I see that it's, it's still, still moving along. Still, still need lawyers, still got to get to court, right? Correct. All right.